Just got two things to say right now. First, I want to thank AccuCare. They are awesome. Our great sponsor. Get there. If you haven't been there yet, make an appointment. Get to AccuCare, especially towards the end of the season when your body needs to get that extra push and be healthy on the football field. Rehabilitation, recovery, they are the best. Make an appointment. Call. Call them and tell them you're coming. All right? The Shore Football Report is definitely endorsing going to AccuCare. They're the best out there uh, right now. And they have athletes going there around the clock, all sports, and, and that's that. And also, when you're transitioning to another sport, your body is going to be needing this AccuCare um, treatment because you're using different body parts. So just make sure that you utilize AccuCare located in Brick. They are the best. I love being associated with them. They are part of the team, the Shore Football Report team. All right. The other thing I want to say is this. Subscribe to the Shore Football Report YouTube channel. Every one of you, when you watch it, click subscribe. It's free. It's free. Turn the notifications off if you don't want to hear it. But subscribe. By you subscribing, says thank you. I need a thousand. I want a thousand subscribers. Please, 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 please subscribe. <laughs> Scott Stump says I don't say it enough on our show. That's why we don't got a thousand subscribers. But subscribe. All joking aside, it's a cool thing to do. All right, join the join the Shore Football Report team. We got so many things that are going to be going on our YouTube channel, not just our talk shows. We're going to have extensive, extensive all-star team uh, coverage that we're going to do. Also, yes, you've been asking, the Stumpy Awards, they're coming back. The Stumpy Awards are coming back from eight years ago, and I know you guys are going to love it. So we're going to have all my all-star teams, uh, all county, all shore, um, all division, my rankings of players, because I changed things up and seeing how guys are playing, adding the freshmen, the, the 2026s are going to be included in that rankings too. It's a lot of stuff all going to be on our YouTube, the Shore Football Report YouTube. Subscribe. You won't want to miss it. In the off season, I'll be doing things around the clock for recruiting, talking with college coaches and coaches from all over the country will be on my talk shows throughout the off season. There's no off in my season. All right. Subscribe to the Shore Football Report. And also, more importantly, make an appointment to AccuCare. AccuCare Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine in Brick, New Jersey offers a state-of-the-art facility with all the best and current treatments. With athletic trainers, massage therapists, and doctors of physical therapy, AccuCare has everything you need to stay healthy and perform at the highest level. Cupping, stretching, laser therapy, compression boots, and a full body cryo chamber are just some of what you can expect at AccuCare. Check out their website and social media links in my bio. No prescription is needed to see them. So, so call them today and start feeling and performing at your best. Again, thank you to AccuCare for sponsoring the Shore Football Report. Hi, right, Rob. In South Jersey Group 4, we have the – it's surprising. There's very few Shore versus Shore matchups in the first round across all the brackets. 
But here we have one with Jackson Memorial playing neighboring Manalapin. These teams have had a pretty nice rivalry over the years. Uh, that's a good game. And then you have Lacey going on the road, tall order at number two, Millville. Uh, let's just start with the Jackson Manalapin game. Obviously, we know these teams. I just saw Jackson Memorial last week, played a great yep. game against Freehold Township. They looked good on all phases. Uh, their offensive line was dominating. They ran the ball well. Ty Mann hit some plays off rollouts and play action. But whereas Man they come in with momentum, whereas Manalapin has been really struggling. They lost to a, a previously winless wall team the week earlier. Um, they Emotional game. Emotional yeah. game. Eddie Guerrero. Yeah. Eddie Guerrero coming back and all that. Yeah. So I guess how do you see this turning around? How do you see this coming out and like, can Manalapin possibly turn it around facing a tough Jackson? I talked to Dom Dominic Lepore, and he he kind of you know how coaches want to sway numbers. He goes, "Hey, the Phillies got hot with the six seed, you know. <laughs> it's not good because we're Mets fans." But congratulations, those at Jackson. When you're talking coaches of the year, how about Jackson that was three and six last year to now they won co championship in the Constitution uh, six and two. They're, they're back where they belong, they, that is what Coach Mistretta says. You know, but then, then they're playing a – I wonder if it's good to be playing a team that you know or a team you don't know. Because I think Benalpin, yeah, they're six, but are they a scary six? I think my answer is yes, because you know they got some guys with Michael Qualton, the kicker, Anthony Macchio can score at any time on returns. They play good defense, but the question is, can they score enough points? Right. I mean, in the most of their big games, they've kind of been in the 10 to 17 point range. And that's really playing with fire. I mean, that could yeah. come down to a play or two where you're, they've been losing one heartbreak. Every, and meanwhile, Jackson, is they had the tough loss to Colts Neck in which their offense got held down. But they've since then been grinding out wins. They've diversified their offense. They have, you know, Jaden Hernandez was kind of showcased a little bit against Freel Township. He's another weapon as a receiver and in the backfield. Um, Aiden Sweeney, a couple touchdown runs. You know, they still have Del Sandro as a deep threat. Ty Mann as a dual threat. He had some nice runs setting up. So I feel like they have a pretty balanced offense. Um, and defensively, they look really good. And, and you know, I, you're right. I think it really comes down to can Manalvin generate enough offense or can their defense play to the point where they can get a shutout or hold them to seven points. I think that, you know, will pretty much decide that game. Play both. This is one of those teams where – and this is one of those games I feel like where the line really decides who wins the battle up front, you know. I'm going to play both sides of the fence. Can you honestly tell me that Manalpin's schedule was not tougher than Jackson's schedule? Think of it. Oh, way tougher. Okay. Way so tougher. your record is going to be reflective of that too. So when the game starts, you usually find out in the first series on both sides. <clears throat> wow. Okay. There's some gap in holes or this line's dominating the other side. Manalpin's a scary six because if well, they're if they're so used to playing RBC Donovan Catholic, yeah, Northern, I mean I think a lot of the playoffs are, are right. You're right. I think it's a referendum on how strong was the American Division. Can you be the team that's down near the bottom of that and mm -hmm. still be a team that gets wins in the postseason? I, I I mean when you talk about upsets of the uh, in the bracket, you got to say Manalpin has a chance to upset them, but Manalpin doesn't think it's an upset because they really believe that. You know, they're a good football team, and, and they are. So th that could be an upset right there. But I'm very curious to see if Delisandro and Jaden Hernandez and Ty Mann can kind of come up with some big plays. And if they do, Manalpin's going to be scrapping for some points, and then we'll be right back again. It, it's got to be – if Manalpin scores 20, it favors them because they play good defense. If they can't score under – if they go under 20, then, you know, we're sitting here saying if they only had one more score – but they're going to be in the game. It's going to be a game that's going to be a great game to watch. Um, and, and, you know, the short conference is going to win in advance. That's the one thing that we can guarantee, right? But how about Lacey? Lacey and Millville. I think Lou Versillo knows a little bit about state playoffs. Um, playing Millville, who I believe is the favorite of the, uh, of the whole bracket. I just think that they're starting to click right now. They got some dudes that transferred in last year. Um, they got some big power five type of guys there. But yeah, Lacey, Lacey beating uh, Brick and Southern um, gave, gave them the opportunity to be in the state playoffs and having the multiplier, which does help. So uh, I was very happy to see Lacey get, get in there because it didn't look very good when they were playing Central when they were winless at 0-4. 
Yeah, I think that's a thing that at least is in Lacey's favor here. They've been playing their best football in the last month. Mm -hmm. You know, they had a slow start, but then they got two big wins just to get them into the postseason. So that certainly helps. But you're facing a Millville team. You know, Latsier Brooks has, you know, 570 yards receiving, eight touchdowns. Yeah, good. You know, he's one of the best wide receivers in New Jersey, a sophomore too. Their quarterback, Jacob Zamot's thrown for 1,800 yards. Uh, Teron Hale, they, basically they have two superstar receivers that each have over 500 yards receiving <laughs> and, you know, have combined for double-digit touchdowns. So that's going to be really tough for Lacey secondary to try to stay with those guys. Um, and if, if the game becomes like a shootout, that certainly favors yeah. Millville more than Lacey. You know, Lacey wants to sit on the ball, keep it low scoring, yep. shorten the game. Um, and then thinking a little bit forward, you know, Lacey obviously a big underdog. And like you said, Millville, uh, you know, could potentially win the whole thing. But I guess that'll be the other question. Can the winner of Jackson Memorial and Manalapan give Millville a run, which certainly we'll, we'll analyze mm. next week if it comes to that, if yeah. that's the scenario that comes through. Um, I guess my other – do you see any other sleepers? Hamilton. I think Hamilton. I, I, I like Ocean City too. Ocean City is a – I mean, they played some tough teams. They lost, but they're an experienced football team. They run the RPO offense. I think they can beat a – I mean, this is – it's a strong mid-level uh, teams in this bracket. And Shawnee is an outstanding coaching staff and great tradition, right. you know that. Um, so there's some great games where – I wouldn't be surprised if the 4-5 Ocean City is in the finals because they can beat Hamilton. Those, I, th I think the Ocean City Shawnee winner can beat – Hamilton. You got Heightstown, the head fo football coach, Coach Fullen. Um, he's from Ocean County. And, you know, credit to him, you know, being a, uh, a longtime college coach. And now he's in the high school. It's funny because he would call me up and ask me for advice. Meanwhile, a couple years ago, he was on the college level. But high school, college are a little different, especially the kids. They have different issues, you know, with that. But he's a, he's a great guy. I'm hoping that, you know, he can do well there. My buddy's a coach at Hamilton. Um, and, and, you know, I know the principal there. So it's, is, there it's, anyone, is there anyone in South Jersey that you're not friends with? Should we just list maybe the one or two programs where the coach isn't your friend down there? My wife always says you got a million friends, but nobody talks to you. <laughs> <laughs> nobody wants to pick up the phone. No, but the greatest time is this year is when everybody calls around this time. We don't talk Christmas. We don't talk birthdays. We only talk during the state playoffs. Right. Clyde Falcon would always give me a call. Every time this at this time of the year, it's awesome. But this is that's why uh, high school football is the greatest sport out there. So when you evaluate the Shore Conference chances in this bracket, how do you see it? I, I see. I like them. Maybe get well. They're going to get to the state semis, but you're playing Millville. Everybody's clumped in that one side of the bracket. Let's be honest. Millville is the class of that side of the bracket right there. So um, you know anything can happen. Millville is explosive, and I think they're a little too much for those guys. Move up to Central Jersey Group 4, where we got another number one seed from the Shore Conference. Who else? Middletown South. Yeah. God knows how many times they've probably been the number one seed in their history. It's, it's almost like clockwork every year. Um, so we have them as the, the top seed facing uh, number eight, Cherry Hill West. And they will play, if they get through that game, they will play the winner of Colts Neck, who again, during this before the season, people weren't quite sure about them. They won a share of a division title. Now here they are in the playoffs. They got a tough draw with Winslow Township in that first round game, yeah. but the good news is on their home field. And then we have seven seeded Long Branch heading down to South Jersey to play Penn Salkin, number two seed. Um, I mean, let's just start with the top seed here. Middletown South has been playing their best football. They're coming off a huge win over Donovan Catholic. That's got to be a big springboard into the playoffs. I was so impressed with Coach Andanucci in Middletown South. Week two, I believe it was, against Long Branch, at Long Branch. You know, you always wonder, is this the time where they're going to drop down? Is this the time? And, you know, the first quarter, they didn't look very good. Long Branch took it to them. But all of a sudden... He just wore them down, wore them down. And to between you and I, since that half, he has not looked back at Middletown. They're physical. 
Colin Gallagher is one of the best defensive players in the short conference. Jake Zawakal is one of the best multi-positional guys. They're yeah, he fun. does everything. I mean, he'll kick, he'll get an interception for you. He'll throw a touchdown. Yeah. He'll run for a touchdown. He'll kick an extra point, and then he'll drive the bus home. If you're and he'll the serve the game. popcorn. He'll serve the popcorn in the yeah. stands. But they're, they're very impressive. And, it, and, again, tradition doesn't graduate. Give Coach credit with what he does over there. And they're really playing their best ball at the right time right there. And Colts Neck, the, you know, credit to Coach uh, Ahern, what he's done, Coach Amps, uh, six and two. He's going to have to ride Scully in that first game. It's going to be a close one right there, really close, two close teams. And Chad King in his first year, you know, kind of taking him to the, to the state playoffs, I think is real huge, especially when Danny George, a legend, you know, left, uh, he left him the program. And as far as South, this Cherry Hill West team, they're playing at the AC. They have a running back, Gary Rowe, who has yeah. just under a thousand yards rushing. They did put 30 points on Penn Salkin in a loss to them, yep. um, which showed what they're capable of offensively. But this is only the third state playoff game in their history. They've never won a state playoff game ever, and they have to go to a team that's won a bajillion state playoff games. So you got you like to see you most likely feel, feel like South is going to roll in this game. I think the Winslow Colts net game is a real intriguing matchup. Um, Winslow has a running back also that has almost 900 yards rushing, the senior Jamil Peterson. But the big player you're going to want to watch on Winslow is Ijani Shakir. He's committed to Penn State. Wide receiver, 340 yards receiving, two TDs, also yeah. a D-back that has three picks. So a high-level, you know, FBS guy, one of the better individual players in the state. Colts net counters with their running game, um, I guess – is this the more explosive offense of Winslow against the rugged, like, grinded-out Colts neck? How do you see this game? Scary, because if Colts neck is uh, playing from behind, it's going to be tough for them. They need to be in the lead. They need to be in control uh, with the stuff they do. But what what you were saying before about Cherry Hill West, been there, done it. I remember when we went to the state championship game and we played Delsey, and we've never been to the state finals before. Delsey – had these flags and banner that had all like Manasquan all the years and they didn't look at me or the program. They kind of were focused. And here we are, you know, we're, we're loving the atmosphere. It was great. You know, again, mm -hmm. and that goes with coaches too, not just players. So if you have not been there, done it, and a program has, it's a big advantage. It's a big advantage. You know, it goes in at Middletown South yeah. you know, where they've ended a lot of people's seasons at the swamp. Yeah. So, yeah, that's not an easy place to go. And, I mean, Colts Neck, that's a good thing, is at least on their field. But they just come – they're coming off a real tough shutout loss to Marlboro. So yeah. that's the other thing. It's like they want to get – and you, you can't tell me Winslow didn't watch the film of that game and see, well, this is how they shut them down. Scott, um, I'm so there. I mean, listen, we're all short conference fans, and, you, and, and, and we want them to win every game. They're not playing another short conference team. But I'm very nervous about this game because they are one-dimensional. And then you have an explosive team coming in who's who's played very good competition too. This looks like an upset alert to me, a five playing a four um, with that. So Colts Neck has to score more uh, than I would say 20 points against a Winslow team that can put up 20-plus on any game any game with that. One interesting game, too, is here's one for you. Clyde Folkham. Remember him from West Effort? West Effort, yeah. Legend. So, listen, I get, I, I can't sleep when I think of that that name, Clyde Folkham. We could never beat West Effort in the state semis. We lost three times to Clyde, and now he's at Mainland as an assistant coach. And there's, I'm not shocked on how great Mainland's doing right now. So I'm going to say this. Mainland's got to be a threat. In that, in that, in in this field right here, having a staff added a Clyde Folkham to this staff right there too. Yeah, you're right. It's funny. I remember covering a lot of games where short games against Clyde Folsom's West Stepford teams, where I had to interview him after the game because they were victorious. So yeah, that that is a tremendous addition to that staff. And you're right. You have to consider a mainland a threat. Um, as far as the one other short conference team yeah. in this bracket, like you said. Chad King kept up the tradition of Long Branch being this perennial yeah. playoff team, so they're back in. They've been playing up and some down. of their better football yeah, yeah. in the later weeks. They've been a little up and down yeah. offensively, I feel like. Their defense has been a pretty solid constant, with the exception of the Toms River North game. But that Toms River North made every defense they've played look bad. Um, but I, I think Long Branch, this one is going to be tough because they've been a low-scoring team, and Pensalkin – 
is averaging 39.3 points a game and hasn't yeah. been held under 30 the whole season. They also have Khalil Ali, a defensive back committed to Boston College, kind of like an all-around athlete. Also plays wide receiver, has eight touchdowns, you know, nearly 400 yards receiving. So they have a superstar guy on their side, a huge scoring offense. Uh, yeah, I feel like, you know, Long Branch does have a lot of young players, which I think like gets back to your earlier point. Just them being in that playoff atmosphere yeah. on the road, seeing what it takes could help them, you know, coming back for next season. They love playing for Coach King. They really do, which is obvious. I don't know how physical they are up front. They have a couple key injuries. They play a freshman outside linebacker tight end going against a Penn Salkin. The game that hurt them this year was losing to Southern. If they beat Southern, maybe they would be playing a little bit more of a competitive game because I think Penn Salkin is a dark horse to the favorite Middletown South. That's who I believe with that. Also, you got to include Mainland too if Coach Clyde's listening. So – yeah, um, that's that's my thing is, uh, you know, I think we, we feel like Middletown South is the favorite to certainly reach the final, regardless of who wins that other game of uh, mm -hmm. Colts Neck Winslow game. 100%. Um, but yeah, do you see any other, you know, I guess, like you said, mainland is probably that other team to get in the way of a Middletown yeah. South Penn Salkin final and maybe Winslow themselves. I mean, they got they got some guys. So we'll see how that turns out. But you know, Middletown South has played one of the most ruthless schedules in New Jersey. They yeah. had a hard game every single week. I can't think of a team that's more battle-tested as, as a public school than Middletown South. But be, beating Donovan Catholic last week at Donovan Catholic with athletes like Michael Thomas III, uh, you know, on, on there and prepared them for games like against Winslow and all that. So that was a huge win for Middletown South's program, beating Donovan Catholic, who has high expectations going into their state playoffs too.